Hi, and welcome back to a Club Building 101 video here in the shop. Now today, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to replace ferrules, which are, which I may have talked about before, these little pieces on the top of the club that go between the hosel and the shaft. Now there's lots of different ones you can use. Obviously, these are just a very simple half-inch stock one. You'll see ones that are maybe three-quarter. It's not very often anymore that you're going to see anything longer than that three-quarter length, except if you're buying aftermarket, which I will be installing today, which are these ones right here, pretty cool color ones. Now I've already gone through the process of actually, we're pulling apart most of the heads in the set that I'm going to be building because you don't need to see me do that six times to understand the process. So I've got a set of T100s here. They've got some Projectex LZs. They do have grips on them and I'm going to show you why you don't actually have to take their grips off. It's not one of the things that is generally if you're going to be building from scratch, you want to start over and actually build everything and cut the length, put grips on, all that stuff. But in this case, I just want to replace the ferrules, which is going to involve pulling the heads, cleaning the shaft, pulling the tip weight out, replacing the tip weight, making sure that they're all clean on the outside as well. I also already have epoxy mixed too because it's another part of the process that is it takes some time and I really just want to show you how to make sure you go through the process of actually replacing the ferrules which is the main part of this. Now also, what I'm going to show you after too, before I go through the rest of this <clears throat> process, is the swing weight. Because there was a set swing weight on these, I'm going to be losing the tip weights as I pull the heads. You can reuse them but it's very painstaking and I mean you can get tip weights for very little money. It's easy to keep them in stock or just have a few kicking around. And I'm going to actually re-swing weight the clubs with the grip on, which is how a lot of OEMs do it. They'll install the grip on the pre-cut shaft, they'll check, they'll add any tip weight that needs to be there, and then from there they'll assemble and you're ready to go. So first thing I do is I'm going to pull ahead. As always, make sure you're wearing safety glasses because you're dealing with heat and you never ever know if something's just going to pop or explode or whatever. Now generally you're not going to deal with too much explosions, but you don't want anything you know, having to pop or expand because you are using heat and it's going to expand too quickly and shoot maybe something very hot into your face or your eyes. So I'm going to be using a shaft puller. You can actually just use a vise. I like to use a shaft puller. I do it right over top of a garbage can so it's easy. Everything just kind of falls in there. Keeps the shop nice and clean. This is a matte gas torch, by the way, so this is something that is a little hotter. You can use this for also like flaming wedges or flaming putters. I do have a butane torch, but I like to use this when dealing with steel shafts because it's something that is just very efficient because it burns a lot hotter. So let's go. Because it burns so hot so quickly, Unless I'm touching the hosel, which I'm not going to do, I actually don't need to use gloves. If you feel uncomfortable not like just using your bare hands, by all means just get a simple pair of leather work gloves. Makes it really easy. Head's already off. The tip weight is still stuck in there and obviously the ferrule is on the golf shaft. First thing I'm going to do is, because it is still warm, just take just an old towel. This is an old cotton shop towel and I clean the top of the hosel. What this does is it makes it look, hopefully you can see that, makes it look like new, there's no extra residue there and then that means the new ferrule is going to sit perfectly flush. I'm going to clean the head out, quick little check and it's good to go. So that is ready. I'm going to put it with the rest of them. Now this is the other part of this whole process and that is prepping this golf shaft to actually go back into the club head once the new ferrule is installed. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to come back to the shaft puller in just a moment. Because the ferrule is stuck on there, I'm going to take a knife, just a normal straight blade, I'm going to clean it off. Bye bye ferrule, it's gone. Now there is still a tip weight, hopefully you can see that, stuck in the golf shaft and what I need to do is get that out of there. 
because if I just go to install it, air, air can escape, and you're gonna either have creep, so the, the shaft's gonna actually start moving its way out of the hosel because there's air trapped, or what ends up happening is it's not gonna create a proper bond because air hasn't escaped, or you're gonna get that cracking sound, which means the ferrule's not set right, and all these other different problems that you don't wanna to have to deal with. So to do that, back in, this is the shaft puller again, you can use a vise pliers, and that torch again. You don't necessarily need to be using this, you can use the butane torch, but I like to use this because it is efficient. As soon as you get that little bit of smoke, you've basically shown that the epoxy is broken down and you're going to be able to pull it out. This is all very hot, as you can imagine. There's the old tip weight. I'm not going to throw it in the garbage right away because it is just a normal plastic garbage bag and it's going to melt right through. So I just let it sit on the bench, let it cool down, I'll throw it out after. I also have my drill here because what I need to do is make sure that this shaft, air can escape when I go to glue. Because if air can escape, as I said earlier, you're going to get air pockets. You see it's pulling stuff out. Now to make sure that the rest of it is actually out of there. Simple. Here's another step that you want to do. Now, there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can actually go through this process. This is my quick and easy way. These are golf clubs where I'm not concerned because they're already used. They are a set that I'm going through the process of testing out right now. So it's not like I need them to look factory brand new. Not, that's not the goal here. The goal is to just replace the ferrules. So I want to make sure that I can let air escape from this grip. Generally, when grips are installed, the tape is a little scrunchy, creates a little ponytail, gets pushed in the shaft. But what that also does is it blocks the area. That's why grips actually have that hole in the end in the first place. So what I do to get that out and just make sure that it actually let air escape is you can use something like this, which is designed to, you know, push that hole through. It also works if you have a rattle in a golf shaft and you don't want to pull it apart because what that does is it holds that grip uh, cap open. But I want to, there's an easy, simple way to do it. And that is either I can throw it back in the vise or I just do it by hand. Just put the, just put a drill bit on there and just spin nice and slow. That's it. Not going to push hard. What that does is, it makes sure that air can escape because I've cleaned it out and it's allowed that hole to be opened. And now to know that there's something else that's stuck in the golf shaft, just hold it up to a light and look through the tip. The tip could still be warm, so you'd want to be careful handling it, but I can see light, so we're good to go. And that is how you clean and prep the golf shaft. Now it's time to go through the process of actually getting them together to, well, put them together. That was my 7-iron, and I have the 7-iron right here. I'm going to take these pieces and put them away because I don't need them now. I've also gone through the same process I'm going through right now with the rest of these heads already. I have my tip weights, I have the shaft that is ready to go into the club head, and now I need to figure out what, the, what tip weight I'm actually going to have to use to get back to the original swing weight. I know they were just around D0 because they are a little short. And because of that, I'm not worried about getting into a very specific swing weight. I just know that they're going to be roughly in that area. So right now, I throw it in. It's very difficult to see uh, on the shadow graph, but we're looking at right now an assembled golf club is at like C, about C six and a half. Again, I need it to be a lot higher than that. So I'm gonna to go to my tip weights. I'm gonna start with a seven gram. And also remember too, once you add epoxy and the ferrule, you're gonna get a little bit extra weight there. So as long as they're consistent, it's gonna bump up a little bit at the end. So right now, 
I've got it. I need, I need one more gram. It's a good thing I can go all the way to the end. So take that out. And the last heavy one. So I'm just below D0, which is exactly what I was looking for. That's what the rest of the set is already set to. And now we're going to go through the actual building process. What I always do too is I set the heads with the tip weights aside. So when I go to actually assemble, everything is very quick and easy. Club heads have been cleaned out, but I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to show you how to do that. Wire brush. Even after already being cleaned out once, I'm getting stuff like just a little bit more residual coming out, which is fine. If you let a set of club heads sit overnight, the actual inside of the hobble will start to oxidize and you want to remove that because the outside is obviously been chrome plated but the inside isn't. And if you're dealing with raw heads, then it's even more important to make sure you clean just before installation. It only takes a minute or two to just go through, clean them out one more time. That way you know when you go to hit them, you're not going to lose a head downrange or on the first hole you pull your new set out on. There we go, cleaned out. Heads are cleaned out, ready to go. Tip weights are also with the heads that they're gonna go with. And now, last but not least, what I have to do is actually clean the ends of the golf shaft. They have been cleaned with the knife, but I wanna actually make sure that they are just like factory new, and that requires using my sanding belt. So, follow me. This is a, I think it's like a, an 80 grit sandpaper. I just want to make sure that I go through the process of taking off all of the residual epoxy. You can see that it's right there, it's good to go. Time to glue. The biggest thing with any club repair job is prep work. It means going through the process of cleaning the hosel tips, cleaning the sorry, cleaning the iron shaft, cleaning the hosel tips, making sure that your epoxy is mixed correctly, having paper towel ready to go. The only thing I don't have yet which I'm going to need is acetone. Now I haven't touched these, I'm not super concerned about this, but what I want to do is just go through every possible detail to make sure that when I go to glue them they're ready to go and I'm not going to have them fall apart. So if I do happen to touch the tips of these golf shafts or there's any at all like leftover epoxy or residual, it's going to come off with the acetone. You saw me go through the process, I cleaned them out, ran them on the belt sander, and still, I got a lot off those. But now I know they're actually perfectly clean. Everything else set aside. Got my shafts lined up in order. 
Don't need tip weights anymore. Put those aside. If your shop's organized, it's easy to put things back as well. Very important. Now, the gluing. I like to start with the longest club and just go in order. Make it really simple. Got the tip weight, got the club head cleaned out, got the shaft. I know which one it is because it's a five iron, it's the longest in the set, it's the longest shaft. Here's the process to glue ferrules on. Use a little bit of epoxy, you coat the inside of the ferrule, it helps it slide on really easily. Now what's great is, these ferrules have already been set, so you can see there's about a quarter inch already through. It's great. Because I don't want to have to do any, or I want to do as little as possible cleaning work after, once the shaft, the, once you've set the shaft into the ferrule, clean the top of the ferrule. Because that means as you push it on, you're not going to get any more epoxy riding at the golf shaft, and this is one less step to do at the end. Now that I know the ferrule's on, there's epoxy in there, I have to make sure that the tip weight doesn't shift, doesn't rattle, so I have to add epoxy as well. You don't have to add a lot because as the club cures, anything that's a little bit higher is going to set around the bottom and it's going to prevent any rattling. It's really simple. Let's add a little bit. Kind of like a pea size on the end. Drop it in. You can see as it's settling, hopefully you can see that as well, there's the little bead that's there because it hasn't actually set all the way in. Now I'm going to use this extra epoxy, wrap it around the top of the inside of the hosel of the iron, and I'm going to push down. Always spinning, always moving the hosel because I want to make sure that it's nice and coated. You can see now already, that hosel is completely, or sorry, that shaft tip is completely coated. Now this is really important because you have to make sure that you put the tip in first, the, um, sorry, the tip weight, because if you don't, and you go to push the hosel and put the ferrule all the way in, then you put the tip weight in, what you've done is you've actually increased the bore length, you've increased this little shaft length, and then you're gonna have a gap. So it's important to go through this process when you put them together so you don't get any gaps and at the end of the day you have a set that's very easy to finish and it's going to look great. A little bit more epoxy, you don't need to use a lot. That's basically the maximum you're going to need. About half a pea size all the way around. I don't know if you heard that or not, but that was the, the air escaping from down here, pushing the air up and coming out the top of the club. That way I know that it's not going to start pushing itself up after the fact. So I'm going to use my body weight to push down, give him a couple hits, know that it's at the bottom, clean that gap between the ferrule and the hosel. A couple more taps, now we're good to go. I'm going to put it over here against the wall. Now this can be the difficult part because the grips are already installed and this is where it's really crucial to make sure that you're, you're paying attention to what you're doing before they set because if you just go to put them on, as you can see, the grip is completely sideways. Not ideal. If you're using something that's logo down, so you've got the grips logo down, you've got the shaft logo down, it might be a little more difficult so if everything is logo down, you're going to want to line it up holding the club head, making sure that the club is pointing straight down towards the ground, and line it up. Now most of the time, even if a club is logo down or a grip is logo down, you're going to see some sort of reference on the back end of the grip to make sure that it's on straight. These are actually going on logo up with the shaft logo down. That's a lot easier. I'm just making sure that the grooves, not the leading edge or not the top line, are actually faced parallel with the markings on the grip. Put it up. Takes just a second. Double 
double check. Good to go. I'm going to repeat this process a couple more times just to show you. I'm going to go through it a little quicker because I've already explained it and I will explain it again, but I'm just going to go through this process a little bit quicker and again show you how I go through it. Got all my parts. Epoxy, ferrule, set, clean, tip weight, set using my body weight, always making sure that I'm turning the club head. Little pea sized bit of epoxy, making sure turning, 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 getting it coated, pushing down, cleaning that hosel transition again. See, it's very clean. And the nice part is the outside diameter of this ferrule is very close to the outside diameter of the hosel of the iron. So when I go to turn them down, when I finish these, once they've cured, then they're going to look really good, really quickly. You want to make sure when you're buying ferrules that you're checking the outside diameter is going to fit because that way you don't have to worry about um, having to go through and, you know, having to replace them again. You always want to go bigger. You never want to go smaller than the outside diameter of the, of the hosel. That way you can always turn them down. It might take a little bit longer, but you can turn them down and they're going to look hopefully perfect. Now here's a little thing to look out for, and it's something where I've felt like I've made the mistake before, and then I go to measure and I realize after the fact that I actually haven't made the mistake, and that is a golf club's, an iron head, the blade length, the actual length of the club head from the hosel to the toe, can affect how that club sits against the wall. It could appear that the clubs are not consistent all the way through, even though they've already been cut, you've measured them, you feel like you've double checked, you go to dry them, and then the, the shaft lengths look really inconsistent against the wall. But what ends up happening is, because the blade length, the longer the blade length, the longer the club is going to appear. This is a combo set. So I have a tailor-made, or sorry, I have a Titleist T300 here, which is a larger golf with a longer golf club heel to toe, and then that's the five iron, the six iron is a T100, which is a much shorter heel toe blade length. This looks almost three quarters of an inch difference, but I know on a ruler, they are a half inch in between golf clubs like they are traditionally built because they've been checked and double checked and checked again. But against the wall, they look funny. So if you happen to notice that once you're going through the build process and say, well, maybe I messed something up, let them dry, then you can double check again. If you've gone through the process of checking before you get to this point, over and over again, you probably haven't made a mistake, but I know that I used to look at it all the time when building combo sets and wonder, there's no way this is right because these lengths are all off and then I go to throw them on the bench, put them on the ruler, and everything looks great again. So that's one of those little things to pay attention to because you might ask yourself, you might feel like you're questioning your, your build process, but it's actually just the club length that's actually causing that. So I'm gonna build one more because you don't need to see me do this six or seven times in a row. And then hopefully if you have any questions, please use the comment section. I'll be happy to answer any questions or do more videos like this in the future. So I've got the club, got the shaft, the club head, the tip weight, the ferrule, epoxy, ferrule, set it, clean the top, add the tip weight, a little bit of bead of epoxy. It's not quite coming up the top. Using my body weight. Definitely going to hit bottom there. A 
little pea size extra bit of epoxy. Always moving, always moving. Cleaning it up. Checking one more time. Up against the wall. And we're all set. So I'm going to finish this set. Hopefully you learned something here walking through this process. Hopefully you learned a couple things to pay attention to, as in making sure that you don't worry too much about your final lengths when they're sitting up against the wall because that's not how you measure club length. It's actually measured from the middle of the sole, not from where the toe touches the ground. That can be confusing. A lot of people will notice that sometimes, but it's not the way to measure. So if you notice those inconsistent lengths, not to worry about it. Remember, it's all about the prep work. So if you clean it up, if you go through that time, you're, when it comes to this build process, as you can see, this is actually really the easy part. The hard part is making sure you go through and prep everything accordingly to make sure that at the end of the day, when you go to that final step, everything's ready to go, work smoothly, and you're going to have a set of golf clubs in 12 hour once the epoxy cures. So again, if you like this video, Please hit the subscribe button, give us the old thumbs up. Uh, if you have questions about any process, please use the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.